Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So I've got a Pixel 3 XL in hand, and it's in hand again because, well, Android Q Beta 2 has been released. If you own a Pixel 3, 3 XL, 2, 2 XL, XL, or regular Pixel, you can flash this right now if you want to join the beta program, whatever. You can get this update. Still not sure if you should, but we've got an update from beta one to beta two. Now this isn't a massive update, but there are some changes we wanted to show you. So uh, let's dive in here and look at what's new in Android Q beta two. Wow, that was a lot of rhyming there. Uh, let's start with bubbles though. I, I pointed this out and when Google actually announced Android Q beta two, this was one of the things they pointed out was this new feature called bubble. So if we roll the, uh, the old clock back to 2013, uh, you'll remember Facebook implemented this feature in their messenger app called chat heads. Well, that's basically what we're doing now in 2019 from Google uh, with bubbles. And remember chat heads was in your Facebook messenger conversations, they would just kind of follow you around in this overlay on top of whatever you were doing. And it was nice because you could keep your conversations going from wherever without having to go into your notification area. It, it was actually pretty awesome. It then died and copycat apps tried to implement it also and no one cared. Well, now Google's giving it a stab again, six years later. So bubbles, uh, very broken at this time. In fact, they weren't even enabled in this Q beta two. You have to ADB command, uh, to enable them. I'll, I'll link to some of that below, but you, you shouldn't do this. It's very, very broken at this stage. Uh, but how it works is, uh, with messaging apps in particular, a notification will roll in and, uh, they'll show up these little bubbles and you can hide them over on this side or this side. You can kind of move them around and then you tap on them and they take you into this little mini overlay, uh, notification system, just kind of like chat heads. Um, this is a messages conversation. If I tap over here, this is a hangouts conversation. Um, within these, there are replying options. So you can do a quick message and get back out of there. And then your chat head should, or I'm sorry, your bubble should just keep living on in case you want to access it later. There are some settings in here and you can obviously maximize these to get to, um, the full windowed experience. If you want, you can just tap out of here and it sort of shrinks back up and there's your little bubbles. Um, if I tap on these and grab one, I can actually drag it down here to dismiss and then that'll go away. Um, I could tap in here to reply, but you can see the keyboard is kind of blocking things at this point. So, so again, none of this stuff works, but this will be a big part of Android Q. Um, and again, it, it's called bubbles. So just a quick look. I, I'm now going to disable that to get back to the normal experience, and then we'll uh, we'll carry on with the video. All right, everything back to normal. Let's uh, let's talk about a big change in navigation. So you guys know we've had this pill down here since Android P, and the pill you you well you still have a back button when you're in an app, um, but you swipe up on it and that gets you into your most recent apps or whatever, and then you can swipe up again and get into your app drawer. Um, when you're in an app, you used to be able to quickly swipe to the right and it would just continually flip between the two most recent apps you had open, or you could press and hold on this and drag, and it would allow you to kind of scroll between all of the apps you had open. You remember all of that? That's changed at least in this version of, uh, of Android Q. So if I have an app open now and I want to switch between an app, if I swipe to the right, you'll see it changed apps. Uh, but if I swipe to the right again, it's not flipping between those two. It's just taking me to the next app over. So you'll notice if I swipe up here, it's just going in order of the apps I had open. So if I swipe back this way, I can go in between the apps that I have open. You see that it's just kind of scrolling between everything that I had open at the moment. And it's kind of broken. It doesn't work that great, but you can see uh, how that works now. I'm just swiping left to right to go between apps. So uh, if I hold and press on this, it doesn't give me that mini sort of scroll wheel anymore. It just kind of lets me see what's on each side of this app I have open and then I can swipe over to one. So subtle change, but kind of big at the same time, if that makes sense. Either way, it's a new navigation that could change with the next beta. So don't get too worked up about it just yet. Next thing I'd show you then is the uh, share menu that's seen some tweaks. So actually just take a screenshot because this is a good way to bring up the share menu. So save, save, save. All right, so if I tap share now, uh, this menu has changed slightly. You've now got a little preview of what you're about to share, which is fun. Uh, obviously you've got your shortcuts that you may uh, may want to share with. Um, and it just looks a little bit different. You got rounded corners. Um, the whole idea though is that it's supposed to just be faster. So Google's really promoting this idea that our share menu no longer sucks. Well, I don't really have much loaded up on this phone, so it's tough to say, but it should be faster. And yeah, it looks a little bit different now. Got it? Okay, cool. Uh, notifications. Let's talk about how uh, there used to be this really obnoxious swipe in Q 
Beta 1 where it wouldn't let you swipe them away. Remember this? Remember this thing where you swipe really hard and it doesn't actually dismiss your notification. It just gives you the option to like snooze or turn off notifications. And you had to swipe this way. Uh, well, you can now toggle that. You can switch between directions. So if you go into apps and notifications and tap on notifications and then tap on advance and then there's swipe actions, you can actually switch it so that you can dismiss it left to right. So now I can swipe that way things dismiss. If I swipe this way, it gives me that menu. Kind of a nice little tweak. I don't know why Google's doing this, but they are. I just think they should have left it the old way. But either way, you now have this little menu that pops up. If you swipe one way, you swipe the other way, you can dismiss. And you can switch between that. So whichever one you you like. It probably needs to be smart enough to know which hand you're holding, you know, because you swipe with your thumbs often. It's probably asking too much. Uh, let's keep back in this, uh, this, this notifications area, though. So uh, the layouts changed a little bit up here. We now just have three of our most recently uh, opened apps that got notifications. Um, th just the layouts change. Um, but if we dive back in here, um, there's a couple of things to point out. Uh, in advanced, this is where you'll see notification bubbles. So these aren't turned on again in Q beta 2. Um, in the background, you have to ADB command to allow that. But once the, all this stuff is functioning, this is where you'll find that shortcut. So if you don't want bubbles, you can toggle them off. Google says it is an opt out thing. So it will be turned on out of the box um, in future releases, it sure sounds like. Uh, this is where you would have to turn that off. Uh, other things though, again, those swipe actions are there. There's this thing up here called notification assistant. And to be honest, I have no idea what this is. Um, the way it's set up is that you can have no assistant or possibly some other third party assistant. Google hasn't really said, they just included this. And if you tap on it, well, it, it says this, notification assistant will be able to read all notifications, including personal info, such as contact names and text of messages you receive. It will also be able to modify or dismiss notifications or trigger action buttons they contain. Uh, this will also give the app the ability to turn do not disturb on or off and change related settings. I mean, that sounds actually kind of invasive. I, I don't know what this is. It would have been nice if Google explained it a little bit further. Uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see, but it, it is there. And if that scares you, you could you know, tap that. And I, I think it's going to suggest things with your notifications and possibly offer uh, maybe not to see notifications from this app or that app or bring up reminders smartly from conversations maybe you had. It's really tough to say. I'm just guessing. But if you don't want any of that to happen, you could probably just turn it off. I'm going to leave it on just because, well, maybe it'll start showing me stuff as the more I use this. Um, that's kind of it for notifications. Those are some nice little changes though. Uh, one of the cool things Google has done is improved uh, volume controls a little bit. So you remember like as you control volume, I believe this was also a P thing. You just got this little slide out and it controlled uh, media volume by default. And if you wanted to control call volume and things like that, you actually had to tap on a settings button and it brought you all the way into the sound settings, then you could adjust. Well, now they've changed it to an overlay that lets you change it without actually leaving what you were doing. So if I go into like Chrome and I wanna change the volume and then I say, well, I wanna change my ringer volume. You see now it just pops up as like a menu over what I'm doing. And then I can adjust all of this stuff in here and ring volume and alarm volumes and all that. So I don't have to go all the way into sound settings, which is cool. If I want to, I just tap see more and then that brings me in there. So a nice change, this is very much improved. Um, other OEMs have done something similar for a while. Google's Google's playing catch up. Next thing I'm going to show you then is in media notifications. So if you have media playing, you can see up here I've got YouTube music playing. So they've added a progress bar. And depending on the app, you can actually scrub around a song while you're in that notification. Subtle change, kind of cool. Uh, it depends on the app though. Like here's Spotify. And if I start playing that, you'll see I have that progress bar, but no scrubber. So I can't do that. So that has to be like built in probably by the uh, by the developer. Um, that said, if we go to the always on display, uh, if a media is now playing, it shows up in like a bigger font to show you what's playing and then the clock actually shrinks down. Don't love that, but I guess it makes sense so that you know what's going on. Um, if I double tap and get in here, um, you can you can control all the stuff from the lock screen as well. And if you expand these, you can see them uh, there as well. So the, the, the scroller works from uh, the lock screen as well. So kind of just a nice little tweak there, right? Um, that's, that's kind of it in terms of bigger changes. There's, there's not a lot of new in this build. Um, we still don't have access to a night mode. So if I swipe this down, um, you'll notice every, the UI is very, very white. Uh, if I turn on battery saver, that will still, just like it did in the previous uh, beta turn everything black to this night mode. So Google's clearly hiding this and they're holding on to it until we get a later release. They obviously have some app work to do to make things flip to this full black. So you can turn this on with battery saver, but you obviously don't want to do that very often. Um, 
with that said, if we go into uh, system, go here and go into developer options. Um, so if you scroll all the way down, this was actually in the first beta, but you see this whole section down here called theming and you can change like accent colors to black, green or purple or whatever you want, right? So it changes that blue to now green. So you can change that, right? This stuff was in there before and there's some stuff in here about fonts and uh, also icon shapes. So the, what the guys at XDA discovered is there's actually a built-in app called Pixel Themes. And we're assuming that that's just going to be a built-in theme tool that Google can update or add to where you'll just go.